Welcome to the 11th lecture of Advanced Calculus course. In this lecture, we will learn about limits and differentiation, their definition. Now, first, let's talk about limits. What are limits? To talk about limits, we first think of a function f from a set a to the set of all real numbers. And we should assume A includes A A includes open intervals in the form of B to A and A to C. Uh, we need these to uh, we need uh, this assumption to talk about limits. Now, if there is a function f from set A, which includes these open intervals, f is said to have a limit at A if there exists a real number, L, such that for any positive number epsilon, there exists a corresponding positive value and positive value delta, such that whenever whenever x a, an element of the domain of f satisfies the relationship x is close to a by a distance less than de delta implies uh, since we used whenever over there implies whenever these two uh, assumptions hold the function value at fx approaches f of a by a distance less than epsilon if this statement holds then f has a limit at a so now, you could be familiar, quite familiar with this form of definition. It is really similar to the definition of continuity. Oh, oh, wait, oh, sorry. Oh, there's a big mistake here. This, this, is, this was the exact definition of continuity. Uh, F is said to have a limit at A if there exists a uh, real number L such that for any epsilon there exists a delta such that whenever X, the, an element of the domain of F is close to A by a distance less than delta, then F, F of X is close to L, the limit, by a distance less than epsilon. If this relationship holds, then f is said to have a limit at a. Now, for example, um, consider a function like this. This function is like a constant function. It is 0 at everywhere except at 0. At 0, its function value is 1. Now, let us calculate that. Uh, uh, let us calculate the limit of this function as it uh, uh, as it approaches zero. Well, um, we should find a real number l such that this whole statement holds at at a equals zero. So what we want to see is that for for any epsilon there exists delta such that whenever x minus 0, which is just x, is uh, the whenever uh, 
if there exists a real number L such that the following statement holds. For any positive number epsilon, there exists a corresponding positive value delta such that whenever x is an element of the domain of function f and it is close to a by a distance less than delta and greater than zero x cannot be equal to uh, x should not be exactly equal to a whenever these two uh, statements hold, then fx is close to the L, the limit by a distance less than epsilon. So you, you should be familiar with this form of definition. It's really similar with the defini definition of continuity. So f has a limit at a, f has limit L at a if uh, if we uh, if f could approach l by any given distance if x is sufficiently close to a now f uh, for example let's see the following function the function is like a con uh, like a constant function it is zero at every point except it is zero at every point except at zero. At zero, its function value is one. Now, this uh, let us calculate the limit of this function at zero. Let's see if it has a limit at zero. Um, so we should see if there is a number, a uh, real number L such that this, uh, this statement holds. So for any given epsilon, there should be a positive number epsilon such that for, for any uh, real number, in this case the domain is all real numbers, so for any real number, if x minus 0, which is simply x is less than delta, then fx is L, oops, Sorry, L is less than epsilon. Now, whenever uh, the absolute value of x is greater than zero and less than delta, we could see that the function value of f, uh, function value of x, because it is not zero, is exactly equal to zero. So. There should be a real number L such that the absolute value of L is less than any uh, uh, less than any given positive number epsilon. So if L is equal to zero, we could easily check that this relationship always holds. So in this case, the limit of function f is zero at a so this this is consistent when with our graph because although f has a function value of one at zero if we see that uh, if we see the function value as it approaches zero the function value is uh, approaching zero not one therefore the limit is one so this would be a more intuitive case about limits so the limit of a function should not uh, it's not uh, does not necessarily coincide with the exact function value at that point and when it does the function is said to be continuous at that point you could easily check that those uh, the definition of continuity will be consistent with such ex explanation now and also we could easily check that um, if function has a limit, then it, its limit is unique. That is because if 
let's say it, there is a function. Uh, let's say the function has two different limits, L1 and L2. And, and let's say the difference between those two different limits, let's label the difference 2 epsilon. Now then, this will lead to a contradiction because since f has a limit at, uh, let's say, a, and that limit is L1, uh, for any epsilon, there should be a delta 1 such that uh, the relationship, this relationship, implies that fx, the distance between fx and L1, is epsilon. We are using this epsilon as the given epsilon in the uh, epsilon delta statement. And since L2 is not another limit, there should be, uh, of course, this epsilon is greater than zero. Um, the following statement must also hold. Now, let's label delta the smaller of delta 1 and delta 2. And let's see the case that the distance between x and a is less than delta. Then, both of these statements must hold. However, that will be a contradiction. Why? Because L1 minus L2, this is equal to 2 epsilon. However, using the triangle, uh, triangle inequality, you can see that this is less than or equal to uh, L1 minus fx plus the absolute value of fx minus L2. Since uh, the distance of uh, distance between x and a is less than both delta 1 and delta 2, these two relationship, uh, relationships hold. Therefore, this is by this uh, less than epsilon, and also this is less than epsilon. And therefore, we get a contradiction. 2 epsilon is less than 2 epsilon. That is impossible. Therefore, we could see that a function f cannot have two different limits if it has a limit. So we could, we could see that um, if a limit exists, it is unique. And therefore, we could use the following well-defined notation. Now we will denote L like this. Limit, limit. Uh, when x approaches a, f, x. Now, since l is a l is unique when f has a limit, this notation could be assigned to a single single number. So, and therefore, the notation is well defined, and we could use it freely. So far was the discussion of limits. Now, let's talk about differentiation. Now, what does it mean when we say differentiation in the language of real analysis? Uh, we say that for a function f defined on a set A that includes the intervals in the form of B to A, this time it is closed, including a. Uh, for a function defined on the set that includes these forms of intervals, f is said to be differentiable. Oops, differentiable at a. If there exists a limit, the following limit. 
if the following limit exists, f is said to be differentiable at a limit when x approaches a the this quotient if there if the if this limit exists and its value is l f is said to be differentiable at a and l is said to be the uh, uh, L we denote L by this notation F prime A to denote the uh, value of a differentiated function of uh, of F at A. So ge uh, geometrically, that would mean let's say uh, there's a function F like this. And let's say at this point we have A. And if X is a point like that, this quotient, you can see that this quotient stands for the slope of the secant line that connects the two points A comma F A and X comma F X. And so when X approaches A, the slope of the secant line will converge to, uh, will have a limit. Uh, if it has a limit, then the limit will equal to the slope of the tangent line at point A. And that is the ge geometrical uh, meaning of this notation. So, F is said to be differentiable at A if, if the following limit exists. Now, let's see a, a easy example. The, the example we will see is the, is the quadratic function. f from all real numbers to un, all real numbers, such that fx equals x squared. We will see, uh, see that f, we will prove that f is differentiable everywhere, meaning that every point in its domain and its differentiated value equals two times the value uh, of the point it is diff being, being differentiated. So we need to show that for any ep positive epsilon there exists a corresponding delta, a positive delta such that the statement that uh, x is close to a by distance less than delta implies that the value of this quotient given here quotient given here is close to the uh, differentiated value f prime a by distance less than epsilon now in this case delta uh, delta being epsilon the corresponding delta for a given epsilon will be epsilon the, uh, why is that because if you look at the given quotient the relationship uh, since fx equals x squared, this is equal to x squared minus uh, x squared minus a squared over x minus a minus 2a, which is just equal to x plus a minus 2a, because the value uh, of this notation is x plus a, and that is just x minus a. So for that to be less than epsilon, we, uh, we could just first assume that it is it is less than epsilon, so that the quotient, uh, this, so the dif different difference between the quotient and the uh, uh, the differentiated value we want is less than epsilon. So in this case, uh, if we use delta equals epsilon, we could easily prove that f is differentiable everywhere, and its differentiated value is uh, two times a. So this was a brief discussion of limits, definitions of limits and differentiation. And in the next lecture, we will see how a differentiable function is also continuous. Thank you and see you at the next lecture.